Okay, so today, I know yesterday, we worked on classification, and we're going to break that down to classes today, and using the dichotomy key, and I'll, I'll explain more of what that is, but using that in order to figure out what you're looking at, what kind of organism you have in front of you, okay? So, you're, we're going to watch a PowerPoint, we're going to fill in the blank, okay, but we're going to also have time for questions and go whenever you think we need to. Yesterday we talked about the classification with kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And I know that was a lot of vocabulary yesterday. Don't stress because we're going to break it down more and you're not going to have to, you're not going to be quizzed on all the vocabulary. It is though like a preview to what you're going to learn in high school. So that's basically what we're doing is giving you a preview and then main key, like key vocabulary. Yeah, we're gonna learn that. But all that extra, all those big words, genius and species words, remember how big they were? Yeah. And we had to use, uh, we had to use the uh, key to help break down the words, the prefixes and the suffixes and the root words. Yep. Yeah, we're not gonna expect you to know that. We just want you to understand how we get to that work, to work naming everything, naming the species. So overall, you're just gonna learn how to name the species. So everybody should have their packet in front of them. And the first page is just where you're gonna take your notes and I'm gonna slow it, guide you. I won't, you know, rush through this and we're gonna take notes. So it says the dichotomous key modified. All that means is it's modified because it has blanks to fill in. The very first thing that we're going to watch in video, she's going to explain what a dichotomous key is. So the word dichotomous, the word di, from yesterday's prefixes and suffix, do you remember what di, di means? What it stands for? What it means? And I'll show you, dichotomous. Well, let me get a marker. So today you're going to describe a dichotomous key. So that is what you can do for me, so dichotomous. Oh, okay. Dichotomous. Do you remember what um, di meant? One, two. Close to, Close yes, two. remember, but that's good because you still need to know, no, that's good. You still need to know one, two, and three, right? One is, who can remember? Mono. 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 And then we got di for two. What about three? Is it try? Try. Good. Good. So when we say dichotomous, it means two, right? We're showing you two ways to figure out. Does that make sense? Two ways to figure out what we're looking at. So we got this unusual alien-looking species, and we're trying to figure out what classification. Where does it belong? What do we call it? What is it called? How do I know what it's about, right? We just use, and we're going to practice on that. We're going to use a dichotomous key today to practice on how to figure out what something is. And that's basically what it is. So we got a brief video. Let's we'll turn that on. Quickly, how to use dichotomous keys to identify. Let's do that. Dichotomous keys use anatomical features, or does that really just mean the way that the organism looks, to identify what species it belongs to? At each step in the dichotomous key, there's two choices. And you read the two choices, you decide which one best describes the species you're trying to key out, and then you follow the directions that it says on that step. Some things to note if you're using a dichotomous key, first of all, key out one organism at a time. So if you have multiple organisms you're going to key out, you need to pick one of them, key it out all the way to species, then go back. For another. Another important point is to always start at step one. Always start at the first step. Never skip ahead. Sometimes there's pictures that go with the key and it's tempting to just kind of try to go ahead and match things up based on the pictures, but you can miss really important points in doing that. So it's important to start at step one and take your time going through each step. So here's an example of a dichotomous key. And for this, there are nine different fish that we can key out using this dichotomous key down here. 
there's eight steps to the dicosmos key, there's always going to be one fewer step than there are organisms keyed out in it. So let's pick one of these fish to key out. You can pick it, you don't have to go in order. Um, you can pick any fish to key out. So let's pick this cool looking one in the middle. And so remember, we're going to always start at step one. So that the fish shape is long and skinny. No, not so much. Let's look at what the second trip. The trumpet fish. So then we're done right there at step two. Let's pick this cool looking okay. one in the middle. And so remember, we're going to always start at step one. So that the fish shape is long and skinny. No, not so much. Let's look at what the second choice is. If the fish shape is not long and skinny, I'd say not long and skinny for that number five in the middle. So, so then go to step three. All right, step three, choice A. The fish has both eyes on top of the head. Yeah, I think both eyes are on top of the head. Um, so the other option is if one eye is on each side of the head. No, I think they're both on the top, so we're going to go to step four. First choice, if the fish has a long whip-like tail, I think probably so, but let's look at the, if the fish has a short blunt tail. This is definitely a long, long leg tail, right? So it is a spotted eagle rene. So we're done. We got we got it keyed out. A lot of times the keys will have the scientific name. This one just has the common name, the spotted eagle ray. Um, so we're done with that one. Let's do one more. Let's do this cool looking one down here, number nine. A, if fish shape is long and skinny, yes, yeah, I think so, so we go to step two. Two choices here are if the fish has pointed fins or if the fish has smooth fins. Well, let's look at its fins back here. I think they're it's pretty pointy, right? It's kind right? of jagged, so we're it's really hard to see. Pointed fins, it's a trumpet fish. So then we're done right there at step two. So depending on which fish you're keying out, you might have to go all the way to step eight, or you might, like this one, be done right at step two. So I'd like for you to now pick, you can pick one of them. Okay. So this is part of us beginning our note taking, but have you ever played a game, like a board game or a video game or something where you had to follow steps to figure something out? Do you remember what it was called? There's several, but remember any games? Or just remember playing games that do that? Yes. So you do? Where you had to go here, and then once you go there, and if you see this or that, I mean, there's different games like that, right? No, um, I don't remember. Not everybody's played any you know, games like that, just some. It's childhood games. I don't honestly know the name, but I know there's a few games like that. And then Michael was like, yeah, I remember that game. I played one like that. But, yeah, so a lot of it is just trying to do detective work, right? Just following your little steps to figure, and that's called a key. So you follow a key. So when she was pointing to, oh, it has two eyes, or it, it is sharp, you know, what was that? Fins. Okay, so things like that. She was just saying, if it has this, then I go to this step. If it has this, then I go over to that step until I can figure out what that organism is. Does that sound like a lot for us to figure out today? Not really. No? Sounds pretty good. I think you guys are such good detectives that you can figure out when we do the activity, really start, go, you know, get started with it. It's a smiling activity. Um, I think you will understand. You'll totally have it. I know you will. So, get out all the way the species. Oh, I'm good. I'm to get that all Okay. Okay. I thought when I entered it, it would. Yeah, let me do this. Apologize. Okay. Let's go back out. I'm gonna go to that one because I think I got stuck on that. I'm gonna take one. Okay. So let's start with notes. We're gonna skip. You'll let me. Yeah. Okay. So individual is not the word you're gonna write. Right? You got blanks behind it. When it's red, guys, that's just telling you the word you you need to write in the space. Is going to follow that, okay? So as you can see, the individual, an individual, animal, plant, or single cell or life form. So we know that. We started off learning about organisms. That's where life begins then. You have that one organism. We got them classified into groups. We talked about that yesterday. Okay, and we got to come up with little catchy ways to learn the um, 
order. Organisms in the same kingdom have similar characteristics. So they have similar. They use an angry zebra. Mm -hmm. an angry Oreo horse. Which one? The zebra. It's an angry Oreo horse. Is that what it is? More than ready the donkey, but yeah. It's a it's a donkey that got into the paint. Yeah, it's more of an Oreo horse. Oreo horse. Is that what you used to call it, an Oreo? No, I still do that. And we may know, like Amelia, she was able to, we all are able to point out some of this, aren't we? Yeah. To yeah, what we recognize. But if we're not able, we can use the dichotomous key. So some things we can recognize and we can tell you that's a chick, right? We can tell you that's an angry, lion angry Oreo horse zebra. Yeah, you see the lionfish. Mm -hmm. But using this key is also going to help us figure out the things we don't know. So the next one says organisms are blank, which means classified. So that's what we're going to put in the blank, classified. And we're doing that. We're classified. And we're going to do some more of that with a smiley activity. And in some kingdoms, they have similar. So the word similar is what you put in the blank. Is everybody good with that part? Or do you need some help filling that? No, I got it. David needs help. We are on fire. David, David needs help. Okay. Everybody good there? David's got it. Um, can you name three organisms from the same kingdom? Remember that's that broad, broad area. Like we talked about animals yesterday, or like animals, but we talked about vertebrates and vertebrates and things like that, and we broke that down. But the same kingdom, can you see any from the same kingdom? Any organisms, uh, and if we're not, well, the birds can somewhat go together. So we can oh, put yeah. birds. We can group those. Okay. Oh, what about yeah? What about? And we have butterflies. Flowers. Okay. Uh, we have uh, that like plant life. Trees and plants. The plantain kingdom. Okay. And the frog. Mm -hmm. Is the frog. Another frog. frog. And they have backbones, right? Uh. I don't, I don't know. know. I think we'll so. find out. I, I think they do. Okay. We'll find out when we try to break out. We we'll try to break down vertebrates. And then the rest of the mammals. And invertebrates. Hmm? And, then, and then the rest of the mammals. Mammals. Okay. Good. So see, that's a broad. And then you can and then you can break them down even further after that. So kingdom is just really broad. Think of it like the overall school. You can break the school down into three grade levels, right? You could take that and break three grade levels down into, what could you break your three, make seventh grade, what could you break that down into? Like ducks, fishing birds, hummingbirds, birds that And think of the school, could like, you do that with the school? Yeah. Okay, so for seventh grade. You can like carnivores, herbivores. But if you think about students, can we do that for classes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we break down classes? We could. How would you break down CJ? Probably by their behavior. Okay, okay. You can, that could be a, a separate one. We do that sometimes. Okay. Are they great? Like A students, A students, B students, B students, okay. F students, F students. Oh, we, oh, wow. we actually oh. no, She's on to something. We, we, are, we do that when we remediate, when we try to get um, sure enrich the activities, like is. activities to help bring your, you know, help you relearn what you, you know, missed or. Not enrichment, but remediate. The enrichment is <clears throat> you know it already, or you know most of it. We just give you a little extra, but something extra to go along with what you already know. So yeah, you can break down. We do that. We break down. We have that group, that seventh grade group, and then we break it down. So when we're looking at grades, we break it down by grade, and then we break it down by how we're going to reteach something or enrich something. Okay. So for the next part, it says dichotomous teas and bold. And over here is where you're going to get the words you're going to put in the blank. It's a tool. The key is a tool. And that's how we learn to identify. We use the dichotomous key. Remember, it gives us two ways. The key spreads out two ways. And in the case of this class, the vertebrate break class, dichotomy, breaking the part here, if it has fur, right, we know it's mammals. But if it doesn't have fur, 
then we take it even further to figure out what it is. So dichotomous is the key to help us identify things, both living and non-living. Okay, so identity is what we should be putting in a blank. Yeah, you need what? Paper? I thought I put your paper out, sorry. I'll find it, I set it on my desk. Here, here, use this one until I find out where I put your paper. I made enough copies. Here, I'm going to put it right next to you. Sorry about that. Okay, so it consists of a series of choices that lead to correct answer. Like this key gives you choices, and that will eventually lead us to figure out what we're looking at, what organism. we got to do some detective work. Remember, die means divided into two parts. You guys have already determined the two. Okay, we got that? Let me know, I don't want to move too fast. We're good? Okay. Okay, so we use it to determine the identity of the non-living and the living organisms. If you were looking, let's see, what situation would a dichotomous key be useful? Near trying to specifically define wild cats. Okay, so you've got a group of wild cats running around, right? Mm -hmm. And you're trying to determine what the specific group they go into or what they're called, right? Okay, that's good. Actually, really good. And I have one that's called a spider web that I put on the board, but not all dichotomous keys are going to look like that where it takes you like a map. Some are just give you choices, and they're called couplets. So they con they contradict. So when it says contradictory statements, it means you got to choose which one's true. So if you're looking at this alien creature, maybe it's in the water swimming around. We'll call it alien because we don't know what it is. Um, we look at these two choices. The fish has barbs on his head. If it does have the barbs pointing up or pointing out, then we're going to go, it says to go to one. The fish has no barbs, then we go to four. So you see how it gives you some, you look for the true answer, the true choice, and then you move on to where it tells you. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. That's the game I forgot to, to um, use as an example a while ago, scavenger hunts. Okay. One statement, I said truthful, accepted, because that's what you can see, right? It's something you can see, so we accept it. And if you can't see it with your eyes, your own eyes, then you reject it. And you move on to where it tells you to. Remember, read them all, because if you're given these scenarios, sometimes they can start off a lot alike. And then the rest of it, you need to read the entire scenario. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. Q, are we good over there? Yeah. You got your sheet? Okay. Let me know if you're ready to move on. It looks like you guys are, but I want to make sure. Can you see it? Okay. If you need to get closer, you can. And then if you can't get it, I've got the answers, and we'll go back to it. So you have to read the full statements. Here's another one. Identify each organism's classification. So let's 